Tem gad nuj muen manish na bemuning. There is healing in our language. And until we start to explore this, we will remain where we're at, you know. My name, uh, English name, is Joseph Brian Gilbert. I'm a Lactic Chief of Kedjanon Territory, Wapalam First Nation. My spiritual name, or spirit name given to me as a child, is Amshkul Godwood, which means he who stands strong. In looking at uh, where we want to take our community as a, as a council, we've set uh, moving into Mino Bemadzawin as a goal for our community. We know we will not achieve it, you know, in one term. But it's setting that as a direction, Mino Bemadzo, when, you know, in a sense, bringing people to where they have a full life, not only in the sense of uh, economically or educational-wise, but spiritually, every component uh, that uh, you know, makes life uh, having a sense of well-being. And, and we've set that as a goal. And we recognize that we have some people, unfortunately, who we may not be able to help simply because they lived that way for so long. So we said, we need to start with the youth. Um, my name is Mariah Trister Matinger, and I'm 13 years old, and I live on Walpool Island. I like just watching movies and hanging out with friends. It's really cool because we have a lot of stuff out here, and they're planning to build more stuff, and I like the youth center especially. I think it's important for me because it's a place to come and have fun and hang out with your friends and um, to have you not get in trouble and stuff. My name is Reese Kayash, and I am 12 years old. The BYF has been really good. They go on field trips and they have activities outside in the field and watch movies. It's a good way for kids to stay out of trouble because they do so much fun stuff. It's a lot of fun and the kids have something to do for most of the day when it's really hot. They can come and play around in here with friends. I like coming to the center to play pool and activities outside. The Kedronon Youth Facility uh, the primary function there is for a place for Walpine First Nation youth to come together to call a place their own, their home, somewhere where they can gather, to have fun, to learn, um, to share, to experience different things about themselves, about Wapu, about First Nation people. My name is Steve Tushkinig. I'm the youth coordinator for Walpole Island First Nation. Uh, I'm also a golf professional. I've been golfing professionally now for about 15 years and uh, I've been fortunate to travel all over and with this youth initiative we wanted to see a lot of uh, participation from leadership, uh, celebrities and more importantly the, young, the youth of Walpole Island uh, all coming together as one and uh, ensuring that our, our youth have a, an opportunity to um, see how everybody else has uh, made it to the level of success uh, that's needed to uh, run Indian country. My name's Phil George and I'm the supervisor with the Walpole Island Police Service. Our youth center uh, has, a, uh, has been a positive impact uh, within the community here. And since our uh, youth center had started there, you, uh, you see our kids uh, um, feeling good about themselves. And uh, I know uh, the members of the, uh, the youth center themselves there, they, uh, they really uh, um, uh, uh, had our officers uh, become involved uh, dealing with the kids and it got the kids uh, feeling comfortable with seeing and talking and dealing with the police officers and our officers now they uh, they take part in some of the events that are held or they stop by and just talk to the kids and and now you could see a, a change in the kids uh, about themselves and a, a change how they want to now become involved in the community. As far as uh, our community and our youth and uh, the activities they were involved in, we've seen a change in attitude uh, or interest among our youth. Because if you look back to my generation, for example, we didn't have a whole lot of conveniences or technologies. Um, but we found things to occupy our time and then, for the most part, uh, kept out of trouble. In today's world, with all the modern influence of media and whatnot, there's a different demand by our youth 
And prior to our youth center being established and, uh, you know, really having a place where youth could assemble, it's been talked about at the council table for years, the need to do it. And finally, we've done it. And what we have seen uh, is a report from our youth coordinator of 1,500 of our students going through this process since it's been opened this past year. That's amazing. Now, some may be repeats, but if you take 1,500 young people, uh, their time being occupied in a program to help them to feel good about themselves, to stay away from uh, you know, things that may destroy their lives or their sense of well-being, I think that's a tremendous testimony of the benefit of this program. A lot of the things that they do is, is just extra. You know, it's, it's even more. And, and they're doing it with, um, with heart, you know, the, you know, that spirit that drives them to strive for more, you know, for the community as a whole. You know, we decided to open this, uh, along with Chief and Council, to open this youth building and, and make sure that we took care of almost everyone on Walpool. I mean, so we have golfers, we have sports, uh, we have drama, we have almost everything that you could think of in, in our building. And, but more importantly, we have the, the leadership aspect, and, and that, uh, along with ownership, is very key. I've noticed the changes over the last couple of years um, of decrease of crime. Um, we don't see a lot of car thefts anymore. We see more students being happy, being involved, going to the youth center. Um, just something for them to do now. And it's really nice to see the youth center there. Uh, our population of 4,300 members, 48% uh, are under 26 years of age. And so when we look at that, uh, you know, that stat and look at the possible and projected uh, population growth, that's huge. How do we address this? And how do we, how do we keep uh, our community members, our youth in particular, from imploding on one another? So we've come up with uh, the concept of three C's, which are basically everybody counts, everybody contributes, so everybody can celebrate. The idea of everybody counts is simply this, that every human being is unique, uniquely gifted by the creator. Uh, they can do the same things, but they have a different touch to it because of their gifting and their individuality. And recognizing that, that means nobody has to be excluded. Everybody can, you know, have value in a sense of, of the wellness of the community. Everybody contributes is recognizing that just by them being here is a contribution. How do we tap into that resource? As a council, we've looked at our resources. Sometimes we concentrate financially. But we've come to a recognition that the greatest resource of any nation is its people. And so we look at our population, say, our youth are our greatest value, our greatest resource. How do we cultivate and develop that so we can have a healthy community and move in that direction? So part of it is recognize every person can contribute to that value them, recognize their gifting, find a way to use it. And then the last C is everybody can celebrate. We're looking for a, an inclusive process where the whole spirit of community that was our way of life in the past returns to us, where it's not segmented, you know, because of rich or poor, educated or uneducated, but moving in that direction where it can truly be a, a community celebration. And among the things we're going to do to move in that way is this coming end of August, we're having a community feast in which we will announce the birth of every one of our members for the past year and also pay tribute to those who have passed in the last year, just as a way of promoting this and fostering our community to move in that direction. I look at it like when you build a fire. What do you do? We make the fire and we do what we can to protect it. We protect it from the elements, the, the, the rain, so that it stays lit. And we have to focus on that fire to protect it so that it keeps us warm. And what happens is people start to come aboard and they know that they have to do what they can to keep that fire alive as well. 
So they put in a log and another person comes and puts a log in. And soon that fire becomes big and it starts to light up and we see more of the brightness and dark. And you start to feel the warmth. And those people that were kind of a part of the barrier or the challenge start to see that the hope is that they come forward and want to be a part of that as well and do what they can to contribute to keeping that fire alive. So right now, our fire might be small, but at least the, the steps are being taken to assure that it stays lit. If you would like to get more information about suicide prevention resources for First Nations, Inuit, and Métis youth, visit honoringlife.ca.